Today we'll be continuing on the discussion of things that are bad for your memory. Uh, as always, this should not be relied upon for halachic psak, and a rav should be consulted. So to continue on, the, just to touch on uh, a couple of the more uh, commonly asked things, the Gemara and Harius writes in Dafya Gimel Mebez, it lists ten things that are bad for your memory, and one of them is hamistakel b'fnei ames, which is staring at a dead body, the face of a dead body. The Mishabura, Simon Beis, of Katan Beis, also brings us down the halacha, that if you stare at a dead body, the face of a dead body, uh, the face of a deceased person, it's, it's bad for your memory. Uh, the Sefer Chupas El Yo, Rabba Shar Gimel, quoted by Rechan Kievsky, also says that if you do this, it's bad for your eyes, it causes your eyesight to dull. There are, there are, there are, uh, the Shmir Sakov Nefesh quotes from Makadmain, one of the early Rishonim, that it's only an issue if you know who the person is, but again, this is not brought down Mahalacha. Most poskim seem to indicate that in all situations it's a problem. The Sefer Meremi Sad Al Harius, which is the Nitziv, he writes, Dafkam Stakpal Harbe, Veloi Rai Lechud. The Nitziv says that it's only an issue if you stare at the face of the dead body, but if you see it in a passing glimpse, then it's not an issue. Rechaim Kinevsky actually uses this Nitziv to explain a very, very interesting Gemara. The Gemara in Bayekot and Davchav Zayin and Aleph says, Berishayna originally, Hayu Megalim Pnei Hashirin, Umechase Pnei Aniyim. Meaning, originally, what they used to do is they used to have open caskets, funerals. But originally, they would only reveal, they would only have open casket funerals for those that were wealthy, because those were poor, and they were, uh, unfortunately, they were very hungry. It, it distorted their face due to the hunger. And eventually, out of COVID, for the poor people, they stopped having open casket funerals entirely. But it seems from this Gemara that there was such a concept of having an open casket funeral. And the Ran over there explains that the reason why they would do this was because that way they could point to the dead body and, and show people and say, listen, this was a person who was alive, and he, he was healthy, and now unfortunately he's dead. It shows you the fleeting al- element of life, and therefore it would help people do tshuva. That's why they originally did it, but the issue is that if it's true that it causes you to forget Gemara, how, how could they do this? So the Nitziv says, so that Rechaim says, based on the Nitziv, perhaps you could explain that the whole issue is staring at it, but to see it for a fleeting moment, perhaps it will be okay. Uh, in addition to explain this Gemara, my brother, uh, Mordechai Yosef, in the Sefer Meimayed, explains that we saw originally, about two shiurim ago, we mentioned from the Sefer Chassidim, that all these halachas of uh, not uh, doing something that forgets, causes you forget your learning, only a, does not apply to women, and perhaps not to Ami Aretz, perhaps not to ignorant people. So it could be that the reason why they would have these open casket funerals is they would only show it, they would only show the casket for women or for people who are not uh, obligated to be concerned that they would forget their Torah, but for a regular adult male or a Talmud Chacham, they wouldn't let him see the, the dead body. But that's what the post can say when it comes to staring at the face of a dead body. Interestingly enough, the Tamei Amen Hagem writes that staring at the face of a tzaddik can actually help your memory. The next topic I want to quickly touch on is reading uh, a tombstone. The Gemara in Harius says that if you read the, the, the writing on a tombstone, it's bad for your memory and it's quoted by the Mishnah Bura. The Sefer Azikar and Rechaim Knievsky, he writes, it's unclear, is it dafka if you read it uh, out loud by, by verbalizing the words or even just, you know, reading it in your mind? Is it also a problem? And he says, therefore, in all situations, it should be avoided. The Sefer Nagaru Mitzvah writes from the Arizal that the whole issue only applies if the words on the tombstone are sticking out. However, if the tombstone is sunken, the words are sunken in, it's not a problem. This is also the opinion of the Mishnah's Chassidim, Yoyim Gimel, and it's also brought down by the Kitzah Shulchan Aruch, Simen Kuv Chav Ches, Sif Yud Gimel, and the Kafah Chaim, Simen Beis Ois Gimel. Uh, that's why, by the way, if, if you go to Eretz Yisrael, most big Rabbanim, their tombstones, uh, the words, the engraving uh, on the words are sunken in. Uh, possibly to uh, adhere to the ruling of the Arizal, and that way it would avoid any person that comes to the grave so they don't read it. The Sefer Yosef Oymetz on Ahmed Reish Ayin Gimel writes an unbelievable thing. He writes, Reisi Medaktik, and I saw that many people, Manichan Evan Agabi Hametseva, 
Many people have the custom of taking a stone and putting it on the grave, on the tombstone, which everyone has, everyone does. They even sell it in stores. You can buy special stones. I don't know what that is, but it's such a thing. So what's the reason behind it? He says, And people say, And he says, Meaning, there's, uh, perhaps there's a uh, Mesora that this whole concept that you're not supposed to read on a tombstone, perhaps if you put a stone on it, it undoes this, uh, whatever negative uh, aspects, whatever Kabbalistic issue there is with reading a tombstone, if you put a stone on a tombstone, it negates the negativity. I don't, I don't uh, again, 100%, uh, not 100% sure, but he says... Perhaps you could be so on this when the words are sunken in that if you put a stone on it, it, it helps. But he does say that um, if 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 you want to be very careful, it's probably best to avoid the entire situation. It seems that Rukhi Vegar in your Deus Sim and Shinai involves Sif Dalit writes that if you did read it, uh, a good thing to help your memory is to say the Tfil of Ahava Rabba until the words Liachecha Ba'ahava uh, from uh, from Davening and Shachris. Um, okay, so the the next thing I want to quickly discuss is the issue of putting on two articles of clothing at the same time. Then we're going to have Ram and Simon Beis of Gatz and Gimel writes that you should not put on two articles of clothing at the same time. The uh, Sefer Kav Chaim says that similarly you shouldn't put on two hats at the same time. I guess... Um, one should be careful. A lot of times people take their yarmulke, put it into their black hats, and then put it on. That's probably uh, something that should best be avoided. There's a discussion amongst the Paiskin whether you're allowed to wear a hat with a plastic uh, cover on top when it's raining. The See the river by Safraim, Chelik Beis, Simen Dalid, Chelik Gimel, Simen Vav, and it's unclear, and therefore a, a, a rub should be consulted. Uh, the Arach HaShulchan in Sif Vav writes that by shoes it's not an issue. Meaning that uh, this whole discussion was only by clothing. Shoes are a different discussion entirely and shoes is no issue. Um, but other price game do seem to disagree with this. Rishleim is Amin Orbach is quoted in the Sefer Halicha Shleima, Chela Galif, Daf Chav Beis that the whole issue is putting on two articles of clothing. But taking two articles of clothing off at the same time is not a problem. He says anytime something is Kabbalistic, it has to be. The only time you have to be mocked, but it's exactly the way it was stated in Chazal. But to do the opposite, which Chazal said not to put it on, you want to take it off, that's not a problem. Um, other Paiskim do seem to disagree. The Shulchan Atayr, which is written by the Kemar Rebbe, was a big, big Mekubal. In Simon Bays, he writes that both cases, both you shouldn't take off clothing either. So I guess it's uh, best to be avoided. One last thing I want to touch on is the Shach writes in Yerodeus Simon Reish Ayin Zayin that it's Yidua for those uh, to those who are Chachmei Emes who know Kabbalah that there's a special Malach and his name is Shade and uh, Shade is uh, as a Shundalid stands for Shemir Daf and he watches the pages that his job is that whenever a person leaves a safer open. He makes sure to forget, to make sure that the person forgets the learning that he just did from such a safer. That um, so that's that's why it's very careful. You should be very careful when you leave a room to close the safer. The Arach Hashulchan in Sif Beis over there in Yerdeya writes that it's only true if you leave the safer open and you leave the building for a, a nice amount of time. However, if you just let's say go outside to use the bathroom, it's not a problem. This also seems to be a, the opinion of the Shail Lumeshev in his Sefer Yadis Nadarim. However, Rav Chaim Palagi says it's a problem in all circumstances. Similarly, Rav Havadi Hadaya Zatzal in Sefer Yaskel Avdi Chelek Hey Yerdeya Simen Nun Vav, he says that there shouldn't be a difference between whether you leave a small amount of time for a large amount of time. Even if you leave for a minute, it should be an issue. He says, think about it. You have a malach who is interested in doing his job. You know, that's his job from Hashem. He's probably very, very interested in doing it uh, as quickly as he can. So therefore, the second you leave the room, he's going he's gonna to take away your memory. And therefore, you should be very, very careful uh, for, for the cover of the safer and for your memory to close it, uh, uh, to close it right away. And therefore, it would avoid all issues. Um, any questions could be sent to avizakatinsky at gmail.com, A-V-I-Z-A-K-U-T-I-N-S-K-Y at